It is the Michigan-Alabama college football playoff instant preview. We heard about the news. Michigan facing Alabama in the Rose Bowl live on Sunday. Bringing it to you right now. Put this up on the channel on Sunday afternoon. And we are presented by Manscaped. Always get 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products in the game. My entire bathroom is Manscaped in it. Manscaped.com. Use promo code GOBLUE. 20% off and free shipping. Before we take a look at this matchup, I want to know what your instant score predictions are. All right off the cuff. You guys know Alabama. You know what they've done. You probably watched the SEC title game last night. Michigan, Alabama, score prediction. Predict that score in the live chat, in the comments. Let me know what you guys are thinking. What did I do, my Jack? I said 24 to 17. My early one was 24 to 17. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Predict the score. Rose Bowl, College Bowl, Playoff, Semifinal. Michigan won their Big Ten Championship game. Fairly rudimentary fashion. Right? Fairly rudimentary fashion over uh, Iowa, 26 nothing. four field goals from James Turner. J.J. McCarthy, another game without a touchdown pass, but Iowa couldn't do anything against Michigan's football defense. The defensive line was on fire all day, and that is the story. 26 nothing. the Wolverines win their third straight Big Ten championships. But I do want to kind of turn the page and go over to the other side, the Alabama-Georgia SEC championship game. 27-24. Back and forth game all day. Alabama kind of felt like they controlled it early, Uncertainty in the third quarter. Bama controlled it again late, and then there was five plus minutes left in the game. Alabama, Georgia. Georgia got the ball back, marched down three minutes, scored the touchdown. A couple minutes left in the game, 250 or so. Alabama, what did they have to do? Just like Michigan last week against Ohio State, they had to get first downs to win the game. They didn't have to go seven minutes, they had to go three minutes. And nevertheless, Jalen Miro did what he had to do. The running game for Alabama was a force. That offensive line with Jason Latham, all these different guys. They looked like they were forced against the Georgia defense that, frankly, has manhandled all of college football for the last three seasons. I think this Alabama team is for real. They don't have a passing game that Michigan should be too afraid of, but they can bomb the ball deep with some of the best of them in college football. Now, the odds makers say that Michigan is a two-and-a-half point favorite. Not a ton of points, right? The other game, Washington-Texas, is a 63-and-a-half point over-under. Michigan-Alabama, only a 45-and-a-half. Now, why is that, right? Alabama... Good defense. Michigan, really good defense. Alabama, not a great quarterback. Michigan, good quarterback. Hasn't played well lately. Nevertheless, Michigan, two-and-a-half point favorite. They were a seven-point favorite last year against TCU. So take it for what it's worth. Five o'clock Eastern, two o'clock local time. Rose Bowl, January 1st. The first of two games, the Sugar Bowl, will be the primetime game on New Year's Day. If you guys have yet to do so, subscribe to the Michigan Football Report. We'll have daily videos all December long here on the channel. Appreciate you, the 29,000. 550 people who have subscribed to the channel. If you've yet to do so, hit that button. Of course, send the link to a friend, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Take a deeper look at the Crimson Tide here. They won their first game of the year, 56-7 over Middle Tennessee, but they lost by 10 at home to Texas, okay? That is a game that I felt could keep them out of the CFP. Ultimately, the Florida State and the injury to Jordan Travis is what got them into the CFP other than beating Georgia, et cetera, et cetera. And then it's just win, 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 win. It's right. South Florida, Ole Miss. Not a dominant fashion, but 24-10 over you know, what would be a top 10 Ole Miss team. Texas A&M, close game. Arkansas, close game. You see a little of a theme here, right? Not a blowout, but not super close of a game right there. 34-20 to 20 over Tennessee. They come down the stretch. Close game against LSU. Pulled away late, 42-28. to 28. Beat up on Kentucky. Beat up on Chattanooga. Needed an absolute miracle. Last Saturday night against Auburn, fourth and goal from the 31 with 30 seconds left in the game, and they just rushed two guys, had a third guy spying the quarterback, Jalen Mewhold all day to scan the entire field, 53 yards wide, and finally threw the touchdown in the back left corner of the end zone. They get the win 27-24 over Auburn, an Auburn team that lost to New Mexico State the week prior. This Alabama team is certainly beatable, but they did beat uh, they they slide the, played the final boss, right? They beat Georgia in the SEC title game on Saturday night, Saturday afternoon, 27-24. to 24. Gentlemen across the nation, I have an urgent message for you, and today's show is brought to you by Manscaped, who's bringing you this urgent message. Manscaped, right? The brand that took your balls to space is now launching them into the ultrasphere, introducing the new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra featuring a new cutting edge design and new generation, next generation dual skin safe blade heads for different shaves. It's pretty much a spaceship 
take your boys downstairs to the next level. I've been thankful that Manscaped gave me first look on this product. I've had it for a little while. I was one of the first people to get the Manscaped Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, and it is absolutely sensational. Those two next-gen interchangeable skin-safe blades are amazing. It's got a standard trimmer blade to take a little off the top and a new foil blade that goes down for a smooth finish wherever your heart desires. Join the 9 million men worldwide like me who trust Manscaped as the brand that they have all over their bathroom. I've got it in my shower with shampoo, conditioner, the uh, you know the razor that takes it down to the stubble. No matter where you want to take a stubble with, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra also does that. 20% off and free shipping. I've got deodorant. I've got lip balm. I've got the Lawnmower 5.0. I've got everything in my bathroom through Manscaped, and you will love it too. 20% off your first purchase and free shipping using promo code GOBLUE. Link is in the comments. Link is in the description. Use Manscaped. Use promo code GOBLUE. Support our sponsors. We'll put it in the live chat as well. Trust Manscaped. I do, and I believe that you will as well. Makes a great, great, great holiday gift. Stocking stuffer. The guy in your life who you don't know what to buy, go to Manscaped. Use promo code GOBLUE for 20% off and free shipping. Take a look at this Michigan offense. Now, Jack, are these these are not updated through yesterday, right? Okay, regular season, the NCAA website has not updated their uh, final rankings as of Sunday afternoon. So Michigan, on offense, 57th in the country in total offense. Eh, eh, okay, 64th in passing, 52nd in rushing, but points is where they did well. All right, Blake Corum in the end zone, 24 touchdowns, number 13th in the country in scoring offense. How about on the other side of the ball? Let's take a look at the Alabama offense. Fairly similar to Michigan, right? Pretty rudimentary, 48th, a little more, a few more yards per game in total offense, 57th in passing, 44th in rushing, and then score more points than probably you'd have expected because they're Alabama, they who are who they are, they've got a better defense, they probably make more plays. J.D. McCarthy, though, he's the best quarterback in Michigan football history. And if you're going to make that claim like I have been making for weeks now, you've got to go and beat a player like Jalen Milrow the quarterback at Alabama. This isn't Tua. This isn't, you know, even Greg McElroy. This certainly isn't Mac Jones or Jalen Hurts, right? A few of those guys starring in the NFL right now. I think this is kind of a shot put like quarterback who throws the ball up downfield. He doesn't have a ton of accuracy. He's dangerous with his feet, and he's a big bodied player. Michigan needs to have a plan for him. It's got to be a better plan than they've had for, I mean, as good of a plan as they had against CJ Stroud or others, but it's a different plan, right? He can throw the ball deep downfield in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and I think that that's something that Alabama will try. But Michigan needs to make sure they don't let him slice them up with 12 yards here, 15 yards there, 14 yards there, 7 yards here, like he has done big time in the last month or so, uh, especially the last five or six weeks, as Jalen Miller has kind of come up as a player. Michigan's going to lean on Blake Corum. 24 touchdowns, broke the 1,000-yard mark. Second year in a row, he's got 1,000 yards. He should have had it in 2021. He had like 950 or something like that. But nevertheless, Blake Corum, I think Michigan's got the advantage of quarterback. I think they've got the advantage of running back. Because Jace McClellan has only got 200-yard games this year. He did it against maybe the two of their biggest games prior to Georgia. He went over 100 against Tennessee. He went over 100 against Ole Miss. But only 803 yards on the year. I don't see him as like a, you know, a wild home run threat, right? Long of 29, he's a good back. But Blake Corum, Diamond Edwards, hell, even Kalel Mullins, I think, are better backs. Or at least Mullins maybe just a better uh, switch up back then, Jason McClellan. On the wide receiver front, you've got two wide receivers and a tight end. Uh, Jermaine Burton's the one to worry about. He can take the top off uh, of a defense. He's been there for a while. 35 catches, 777 yards, and eight touchdowns. Again, these stats. These, these ones are prior to the game yesterday. These include the SEC. These include the SEC championship game. Uh, they're the tight end, Amari Nyblak. Now, four touchdowns. I think that's where the thing is. Look for them to target him in the red zone because much like J.J. McCarthy, Jalen Milrow has not been a surgeon inside the red zone. A lot of his touchdowns have come from deeper or even sometimes dump off screens or little passes that go for 7, 8, 10 yards in the air past line of scrimmage that the players then take for 30, 40, or more yards to the end zone. 45.5 points is the over-under. Michigan's favored by 2.5 points. The Rose Bowl, the final Rose Bowl in what is the normal college football that we've known for 154 seasons. We're coming to an end with Michigan-Alabama, first game of two on January 1st. Are you guys headed to Pasadena for the Rose Bowl? Are you going to head to the CFP semifinal for this Michigan football team? Let me know. 
Give me a yes, type one, or no, type zero. I'm going. I will be there. So I'm going to go in there in the live chat and type one. If you're watching on Sunday afternoon, go down in the comments. Give me a one or zero. For type one, hey, I might hit the DMs. We have to do Santa Monica Boulevard uh, the night before. Uh, something on uh, New Year's Eve. We'll see. One or zero, are you going to the Rose Bowl? Let's take a look at the defensive side of the ball for Michigan. <clears throat> Again, when the NCAA updates their stats on Sunday night or Monday for a season, we will update ours. But going into this uh, the regular season, Michigan was the number two team in total defense, number one team in scoring defense, sixth against the rush in the country, and fourth against the pass. Some of the best stats I've ever seen from one college football defense. Alabama, though, they're good but not great, right? They get up to 18 points a game. That's 14th best in the country, okay? 312 yards, that's not insignificant. That's a pretty decent amount of yards. Teams have moved the ball against Alabama, passing, but maybe rushing. Michigan's offensive line without Zach Zinter didn't look great yesterday. Trent A. Jones got beat a couple times, got himself a holding call, got himself a false start call. That needs to improve. The offensive line in this game, for me, is going to make as big of an impact as it would against Michigan and Ohio State, Michigan against Penn State. You beat Alabama by outrushing them. You beat Alabama by forcing Jalen Milo to throw the ball downfield when you've got six, seven guys dropping the coverage, just like you did against C.J. Stroud, just like you did against Kyle McCord to get those three straight wins against Ohio State. Guys, Michigan's got 28 days, right? 29 days, 28 days. What's the uh, Saturday the 1st? That is a Monday. So 29 days from now, right? It is a Monday, January 1st, to put together a game plan that will make every Michigan fan proud, that will get Michigan in the national championship game, that will have the Big Ten in the final year of this college football playoff beat the SEC. Michigan needs it. The Big Ten needs it. Jim Harbaugh needs it. And I think as a fan, I need it. You guys need it. And it'd be great to see Houston or bust for this team. Michigan's playing Alabama. Washington is playing Texas. And then Florida State got snubbed. I think a lot of people are going to be upset about that one for a while because they didn't get their chance to make it to the final college ball playoff and get into the uh, one of the two matchups, Rose or Sugar Bowl. Alabama, one loss. Texas, one loss. Alabama was one loss. Two Texas gets in over a 13-0 undefeated ACC championship. Florida State, uh, of course, is losing their starting quarterback, missing him for the rest of the year in Jordan Travis. With this game being on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, I should say, I'll ask you guys this question to end this early preview. We'll dive deeper in over the next 29 days. Trust me on that one. Better how that for you. Is it Christmas or New Year's Eve? Right? Just say New Year's Eve and not necessarily New Year's Day. Uh, Christmas or New Year's Eve. Let me know down in the comments. A C or an N. Uh, Michigan's going to be playing on New Year's Day. Right? we are playing in L.A. You might be out there in the L.A. living the life. Might choose New Year's for that one, but let me know. C or N. It's been the Michigan Football Report. Instant Michigan Alabama preview. I've got Michigan win this one 24 to 17. Let me know down in the comments what you guys feel, and we'll have a ton more content here on the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports.